I'm McKinney Smith. After going through a divorce, my sister passing away, experiencing narcissistic abuse, and some significant health scares, I realized through sharing my story that I wasn't alone in my suffering. Suffering, subjective distress generated by the experience of being out of balance. In a deep dive to holistically heal mind, body, and soul is where I discovered peace, clarity, and connection. It is impossible to be truly wise without some real-life hardship, and we cannot develop post-traumatic wisdom without making it through, and most importantly, through it together. Social connection builds resilience, and resilience helps create post-traumatic wisdom, and that wisdom leads to hope. Hope for you and others witnessing and participating in your healing, and hope for your community. A healthy community is a healing community, and a healing community is full of hope because it has seen its own people weather, survive, and thrive. Thank you for joining us on the Heal Her podcast, H-E-A-L, Honor, Elevate, and Love Her podcast, formerly known as the Iwaka My Stilettos podcast the top 1.5% most popular show globally where we have conversations with extraordinary women on their journey toward wholeness and harmony. And since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. As a certified mindset coach guiding women towards peace, clarity, and connection within, supporting the direction of the system toward wholeness, my goal here is to help you thrive. Queen of VIP days, Jordan Gill is a self-made millionaire, business strategist, and fierce advocate for rest. Her mission is to help high-achieving, diverse business owners, leaders, caregivers, and parents to ditch the hustle and grind and build a life-first business. Through her done-in-a-day program, Jordan teaches burnt-out coaches and consultants to work smarter, not harder. Jordan believes that if your business is suffocating you rather than supporting you, then it's time to change your business model. She's helped over 400 coaches and consultants work with clients only four days a month, earning more and resting more. Through nurturing real talk, Jordan teaches audiences that rest is essential for building a business, not a reward for a job well done. So please welcome to the show, Jordan Gill. (laughs) so excited to be here. (laughs) Thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to come on and share your story with us. Yes. I I mean, if this is the place, I mean, this seems to be the place to be when, you know, you're ready to to share some stuff that you may not share a lot of other places. So (laughs) I'm excited and honored. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of the women that have come on here are successful in their businesses and successful Mm -hmm. online and people look up to who you are and what you've built and they may feel like it's unattainable for them it's not reachable and then mm-hmm. they get to hear the depth of your story and realize you're a real human being who's been through some stuff yeah. who is on your own healing journey and if you can do it they can do it too yes absolutely i'm yes. all about it so you and i um first connected for the anti-hustle manifesto yes. uh, panel that we spoke on not too long Such ago yeah it was a great combo to the point mm-hmm. where i asked all of you women like <laughs> okay let's continue this on my podcast <laughs> right. <All> right. <laughs> so thank you for saying yes yes <laughs> totally <laughs> Okay, so before we get to where you are presently and everything you had to go through to get there, I yeah. love to start at the very beginning and get to know the young Jordan. Yeah, you know where it all began. I would love to know, you know, who you wanted to be when you were a little girl, and mm-hmm. what type of teenager were you? Oh, we're going to the teen years, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones I want to skip. Uh, no, but when I was when I was young, I really wanted to be a movie star, which had nothing to do with actually being in movies. I just wanted to wear really cool clothes. And then when I realized I could wear cool, cool clothes without having to be a movie star, I was like, okay, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wear the cool clothes and, and be be fun with it. And now I wear, you know, joggers every day. So here we are. But, you know, back in the day, I really, uh, I really liked to express myself. I was very eccentric, high energy, 
And uh, I was the kid who I my, basically made my mom executive producer. This is why when we talked earlier, I was like, my mom should not be my momager. Love you, mom. But no, uh, because when I was younger, you know, you had those camcorders and and I would do these plays and I would have my mom executive produce my plays and they would go on for who knows how long. My mom is probably thinking laundry, dinner, all these things. And yet here I am filming you f- when you're not even making sense and have no plot. <laughs> so like even on the recordings, you'll hear my mom be like, wrap it up, Jordan. Like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so I I was that kid. I had a lot of energy. And then, you know, moving into to my teen years, I moved around a lot. I went to three different high schools. Um, so my dad uh, was a football coach, uh, both in college and pro. And so uh, we moved around a lot growing up, but going to three high schools was a interesting experience. I went to one my full freshman year, and then I went for six months of my sophomore year, and then I did two and a half years at my last high school. They were all in completely different states, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and New York. <laughs> Wild. And so, you know, it it was a it was an interesting time because one, going to high school in general is tough, right? And even if you have all of the years before that in elementary and middle school to get to high school, it's like, okay, high school is still hard for those people. Mm-hmm. And then when you throw in like you're moving uh, pretty frequently and trying to adjust, I actually enjoyed moving and I'm a very curious person. So to figure out like, oh, what's the vibe here? Like, what are these people about? That that part was fun. Um, and at the same time, it was like, okay, some moving from Wisconsin to New York was definitely like a culture shock situation. Uh, just because uh, I generally lived in like South and Midwest most of my life. And so then to go to the East Coast was like a lot. And I didn't have like the best, probably first year, even though I got voted vice president of the class, which... I don't know what that even, I don't even know how that happened. Like two months after I moved there, I was like, I'm going to run for vice president. And <laughs> like, who? I was very um, bold. I've always been very bold. And so I ran, even though like I was running against a lot of much more popular people than me and I won and I was shocked. I was <laughs> like, oh no, like everybody, kn- like everybody knows my name and now I'm like here and it was a cool experience and and I wouldn't take it away, but it was still tough to figure out the landscape there and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I would say young Jordan was eccentric, was bold, high energy, very extroverted, and just generally speaking, had kind of a take the bull by the horns kind of attitude, which I still have now. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, that, that was going to be my next question. Like, yeah. you said young Jordan, so ha- is that still who you are presently, or have you shifted from that version of you? I think that majority of it is still there. I'm very uh, much a bold action taker. I don't, I don't really get scared to do a ton. And I, I think where it's pivoted is with the chronic illnesses that I have um, and different, different aspects of the health journey, my energy levels have had to reduce significantly, uh, which is hard because again, I, if I have the energy, like I'm ready to go, like we're going. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when your body says otherwise, that's definitely a tough place to be. And so I think where I also learned a lot in moving so much is that like, again, it's, it's not a reinvention of yourself, but you're able to say, okay, you know, this aspect didn't work so well, or this way to make friends didn't work so well. So I'm going to try something different at this new school. Um, And that really allowed me to, again, have this boldness about how I move in the world and recognize that some people are not going to like me. Some people are, and like, that's okay. Uh, And so that helps in business too, because I'm not for everybody. And that's totally fine. I'm very sure of myself. I'm very certain. And that scares a lot of people and intimidates a lot of people. And uh, that's what like a few of my very close friends say is like, it's not that you're intimidating Jordan, because you're actually a very nurturing, like encouraging person. But if somebody is unsure of themselves, they're going to be extremely uncomfortable around you. And that's okay. Like, I'm not here to, to, to make that, you know, a big thing. But I think it's important that Again, if you're somebody that 
knows who you are, is certain about what you like, what you don't like, what rooms you like to be in, what rooms you don't like to be in, it makes it a lot easier to move about. And while that doesn't decrease the amount of dislike, I suppose, I think that I can sleep better at night knowing that my husband knows who I am, my bonus son knows who I am, my parents know who I am, the people close enough to me that when I ask me questions and get to know me, they all know who I am and everyone else can kind of bump it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> see, you explain how moving around as a child and having to be bold and having new experiences helped you. Do you mm-hmm. feel that it's hindered you in any way? Hmm. Uh, I think I think that it it is hard for me to develop very very deep relationships because I'm used to moving around, shaking around, whatever the case is, and so. I think that showed up more in my like like romantic relationships than necessarily friend relationships because I still have friends that I knew from when I lived in you know during that first high school year I'm still friends with people and I haven't been back to that town in I don't know how long so I, I can still forge those friendships not with many but with some and but I think it definitely I don't I don't hold on to a lot of stuff. I don't have a lot of attachment to it much. Um, so while that can seem healthy in a lot of ways, I think in, in some ways it's like, oh, like I have like two medium sized bins of stuff from like my childhood and like, I'm good. Like I don't have, you know, all of the things. And then I married somebody who does have all of those things. And that's a whole other <laughs> <laughs> whole nother thing. Um, but I see his excitement and his draw to the memories associated with all those things. And I'm like, Oh, like, I don't, I don't have a lot of that necessarily. So I think that it, which is okay, you know, physical stuff isn't everything. But I think that having healthy attachments to stuff isn't a bad thing. And even if, again, you're not in that physical space anymore, or whatever the case is, like, ha- having those opportunities to remember and go into nostalgia like is okay so I would say probably that that was what was negative about that situation Mm -hmm. see I have this thing where I look at connection as positive but attachment as negative so uh things that we are connected to Mm. is more on like a positive vibration and then things that we are attached to that are holding us are more mm. on the negative. And maybe that for me, that's just like yeah. the verbiage um, of how I connect it in my mind. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned having chronic illnesses mm-hmm. and I can totally relate. And we've also had many other women that have come on the show and spoke about how they work through or manage or how they're able to live their lives to the fullest, despite mm-hmm. dealing with some of these issues. Yeah. Um, If you're open to it, I would love if you could talk about, you know, how you learn to listen to your body, how you're able to be successful in your business while dealing with these things at the same time. Totally. I think that for me, uh, the chronic illnesses that I have are I have chronic fatigue, hypothyroidism and celiac disease. Um, And so it's a very interesting combination, but um, I, and then I've had bouts of like extremely low estrogen or uh, different hormonal imbalances, but those aren't as consistent as the other three. So for me, it is, it is tough in the sense of, I like to uh, have very high standards. Like excellence is a value of mine. And when it comes to the flare ups and like the extreme fatigue or whatever else, and actually when I have chronic flare ups, uh, especially with the chronic fatigue, like I'll yawn a lot and it makes me very self conscious because I'm not yawning because I'm bored of the person. It's literally, I mean, I just, it's a chronic fatigue thing. So, <laughs> um, but it can come across as rude, right? So, you know, in, in those moments, it can feel like it, it holds me back in some ways because I want to not have that be visible. And at the same time, I think because I'm vocal about the fact that I do have chronic illnesses and that it is a part of me that is not going to go away, then people understand that if I'm saying, hey, a chronic flare-up has happened and I'll get to this at X time. I think it's about communication. I think it's about um, 
just being as clear as you possibly can. And I try to not have business models that are super reliant on me uh, because it's tough. And so, you know, you, you look at how I market or how I sell or how I deliver. There's not as many like live elements. Like I'm not doing Instagram lives, Facebook lives. Um, I don't have a ton of calls on my calendar from that standpoint. And so, you know, that's why for me, VIP day business model was great because it's like, okay, four days out of the month, I get to show up and then the rest of it, I'm on a beanbag, right? So <laughs> like honoring that and even with my Instagram marketing, which, you know, a lot of people admire and are like, I don't understand how you're so consistent with it. I have a folder called B-roll on my phone, okay? That's that's how I stay consistent is I'm on the beanbag and I'm thinking, okay, today I'm going to talk about this. What, what B-roll am I going to use today, you know? <laughs> like it's it. not a lot of where I'm talking face to camera. I do when I have the energy and I, you know, save those up and sprinkle those in. But the way that I do my marketing is is honoring how how I roll and the way I deliver all that stuff, you have to kind of see it through the lens of, okay, if I have low capacity, what are the ways that feel best for me to show up and knowing kind of when those ebbs and flows are like, I definitely do some cycle syncing uh, and whatnot in my business because it's like, okay, when I'm high energy, like let's roll, let's knock it out. And then when we're going down, we're going down and it's just, there's different tasks that are going to be on my plate. So I think that instead of, I used to get really frustrated about it and and really self-conscious about it. And now I just know that it's, it is the way that it is. And so I need to make sure that the business that I'm building is aligning with that versus picking business models and things that would fight me on that. Yeah. And that would require a lot more from me. And that's not to say that there haven't been seasons in my business where I had to do a lot of stuff that I did not want to do or that didn't feel aligned or whatever the case is. Um, for different seasons or for different things. But for the most part, I try to keep it. I know the lanes that feel best for me and I know where I best fit. And so really staying as much in those lanes as possible, because then I don't feel as bad about, Mm -hmm. you know, the flare ups or things. I just know it is what it is. And I can still get my tasks done usually um, that I have because they're they're tasks that don't require like my face to like the outside world, essentially. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. I love that for you. Yeah. I love that. Cause now I'm going to steal half of that. But yeah. I love that. <laughs> I Please do. Love that for the ladies that are listening, because I know many of our listeners uh, struggle with chronic illnesses. Mm-hmm. And we've had one in particular that reaches out quite often when we have other guests on the show, mm-hmm. um, thanking us for, you know, them talking about how they function because she's trying to operate her business Mm -hmm. and she has, I I believe it's sickle cell and some other um, issues, but it's like, you know, you're looking at social media and you're seeing these other people, business women that, you know, that that are thriving, Mm -hmm. that are doing certain things that you don't have the capacity to do. Yeah. And um, you know, that comparison sets in and then you don't do anything and then you start to feel bad and it messes with your mental health and the whole cycle. So I love that you have shared how you're able to honor your body and how you feel and still thrive within your business because you've created systems and and routines and things that work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I love (laughs) the idea of the VIP days and the rest of the days being on your beanbag because that sounds like the life I'm living right now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I also, because your business model doesn't require uh, I guess your your face to face or you being live with like Instagram lives and things like that. I would love if you could um, share with the ladies that are listening, especially those that are afraid to ask for help. Because as much as we um, may be thriving in our business, we can't do it alone. And in order to um, continue to thrive and continue to be strong and resilient, um, being able to ask for support. So I would love if you could speak to that. Oh yes. If you have chronic illnesses or if you have low energetic capacities, if you're caregiving, if there's something that's taking your time and energy and, you know, you want to hit certain goals in business, you're going to have to ask for help. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I don't say that I don't say have to or should very often because I think it 
it feels too restrictive. And I truly believe that there's nothing wrong with getting help. Like, and in fact, it is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, As somebody who, again, has experienced uh, times of not having help and that is not fun. So for me, I've, I actually started my business asking for help. I put in like six weeks notice to my job because we were about to go into a launch and I, and it was for me, God was like, time for you to go. And I was like, I don't have a business. I don't have another job lined up. Like I don't understand this request. (laughs) Uh, However, uh, I do know to obey uh, when he Mm -hmm. speaks. So I gave six weeks notice, having no idea what the heck I was going to do at the end of six weeks. And so I was totally ready to just like eat ramen and live in a dentist office basement. I was like, okay, like this is the hardcore entrepreneurial thing. Like this is just, you know, part of the, the journey. And uh, within those six weeks, I landed $12,000 in monthly recurring revenue. Wow. And the only reason for that is because I asked for help. And Mm -hmm. so I went to people who I'd met at different events or had talked to online, you know, through Instagram DMs or whatever. And well, Facebook DMs back then, because I didn't even have Instagram (laughs) when I started my business, literally. Um, So I literally just went to those people and said, hey, you know what I've been doing you know, for this company, I want to be able to do this on my own. Do you know any clients that need this kind of support? And people were like, yeah, I do. And I got connected to four amazing clients and started my business making $12,000 a month in recurring revenue, which was wow. wild beyond my, that was like four X what I'd been making monthly, uh, in my job. And I was like, okay, I mean, I guess I don't have to live in a dentist's office, <laughs> which is great or eat ramen all the day. Um, and then, you know, five months in, then I was actually burnt out. They were all seven figure businesses and it was a lot of work. Um, and that was my full, like 40 to 50 hours a week was four clients a month. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it was perfect by any means, uh, but I got my feet in the door and figured out. And then I asked for help again, right. Uh, during that time, I was like, okay, well, I know this business model doesn't feel good, but I like these parts of it. So how can I make this work? And that's when I went to VIP days. And so I learned early on that asking for help is not only essential for me, but essential for my business as well. And that people are always more than willing to help. I'm always shocked uh, at how helpful and resourceful people are. And, you know, it kind of depends, I guess, what circles you're in or whatever the case is. But I like to be around other smart, kind, generous people. Mm -hmm. And so to ask for something doesn't feel like grabby or salesy or whatever kind of mentality that people have around it. Like people Mm -hmm. are like joyful. They're like, Oh my gosh, yes. Like I'll connect you to this person or, Oh my gosh, yes. Like I, this is the microphone I use for podcasting. Here's the link, you know? And so getting into the, the routine of asking is something that I do often. And even with, Um, thinking through just how, you know, in business, you want to stay connected um, to to people and too much. If you isolate yourself and you think all these problems you're having are, you're the only one having these problems, which every single problem I've thought that about (laughs) is not, Um, I'm not special like that. And so, uh, which is refreshing to me, right? Because I want to make, I don't want to again, think ill of myself because of things that I'm going through when it's like everyone's, you know, there was a tough time last year where um, I was having to let go of quite a few team members based on uh, some performance um, and then someone's lack of sales. And and it was kind of a combo pack kind of in between, but uh, it felt really hard and it felt uh, terrible. I hate letting people go. It's literally my least favorite activity in business, even more than taxes. And I went to my peer mastermind about it and they're like, yep. And I'm like, this is a big deal. Why are you guys <laughs> acting like it's not a big deal? And they're like, no, it, like we understand that it is a big deal and like you'll get through it. And these are people yeah. who have businesses for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. So I'm like, okay, like it's not a rite of passage by any means, but everybody goes through a point where you're having to scale back and you're having to make really tough decisions and have really tough conversations and it sucks in the moment. Like it does. And 
like you move through it, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's part of the entrepreneurial journey. So having that conversation with them really helped me to then not take it so heavy. Um, it still was heavy, but not as heavy as it would have been had it felt like, oh my gosh, like I'm the only one who's ever had to do this sort of thing. So yeah. I-, I love to stay in community. I love to stay in connection. And I love when others are able to express what has worked for them or not worked for them um, or their perspective on the situation that I'm in. Like yeah. connection and asking is like number one on my task list always. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. Be- well, for so many reasons, but one, I think that a lot of us have been conditioned that you shouldn't ask for help, that you can't ask for help. You know, some, whether it be, you know, childhood experiences where, you know, they asked for help and didn't receive it or asked for help and it turned out negative, whatever it may be. So as adults now, some people have this mentality around not asking for help. And I strongly believe that in asking for help, it allows us to maintain our strength and resilience and all of those things that we want to be rather than depleting ourselves and becoming overwhelmed and, you know, trying to do it all on our own yeah. and then being completely out of capacity. And I think it's extremely important when you also have health issues, because I know personally, um, so I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia back in like 2006. Yeah. And for the longest time, like back then I was doing real estate full time and yeah. nobody knew my struggles. I was mm-hmm. silent about it. So I spent like sometimes six days a week in bed and then functioning on the one day where I could. Right. And it wasn't until I learned to ask for help where I could shift not only my business model, but into a business that aligned with my capacity rather yeah. than that hustle culture that used to be <laughs> a big thing, <laughs> which you and I talked about on the panel. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and no longer subscribing to having to do it all on your own and wearing 42,000 different hats, um, you know, and the being the old school stereotypical Jamaican where they have 11 jobs <laughs> and never sleeping. <laughs> I know, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> But you you spoke to so many amazing things, especially, um, you know, people wanting to help. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, again, if we get out of this thought process that people don't want to help, you'll realize right. that there are people out there that are eager to help. Yeah. And, you know, having done a lot of um, volunteer work and things like that, people are like, how can I help? Where yeah. can I help? What What do you need me to do? And when you're running a business and you're along the way as you're being open about your journey and asking for help, people want to feel like they're a part of something. So it's very easy for them to want to help. Like, I think I probably ask Facebook once a week for help. Where can I get this? Where do I do that? And people are tagging people. People are in my DMs. Like, it's great. I know. It's great. I know. I think that, yeah, if you have this mentality that, again, either from an ego perspective of like, I have to do it myself because X, Y, Z reasons. Or if you're like, nobody would want to help me. Both of those are very dangerous thoughts to have because again, that can keep you stuck in loops and stuck in just like really hard scenarios for way longer than necessary. And so, you know, I found so much freedom in the ask and so much, relief in the ask that, you know, again, I, that's usually my first or second thing that I do when I'm in a, in a tough situation. I don't, and my natural is to retreat. My natural is to not talk to anybody and just like go into my inner thoughts and which is, that's your trauma response. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 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 It's like, okay, no, that's the last thing I need to be doing. Um, And so, and it's not because I'm seeking approval from other people or I'm not seeking the answers from other people. It just, there's a relatability, there's a vulnerability, there's something about speaking something out loud to another individual that there's just something magnetic about that energy that can pull you out of, again, the, the swirl of thoughts that, Mm -hmm. you know, just can take you down and take you over. So I really encourage people. And again, if you feel as though your circle or your you know, influence doesn't have that same kind of generous uh, type of energy, then again, I kind of have the mentality of getting into a different room. There's plenty of rooms. Like the world is wide. 
And so if, if your current circle and your current people are not, and that's not to say, I'm not talking about like, you know, leaving husbands and stuff like that, but just like, generally speaking in business, uh, we'll keep it there. Like find you some people who again, will challenge you, but also encourage you and give you the the space to talk and to feel and to ask. And if they can support, they can support, or if they can't, they'll find somebody who can support you. Right. Yeah. Um, those, those types of people being around them is, is everything. Absolutely. And I think what you mentioned earlier about like your situation when you had to let someone go and then you asked, mm-hmm. you know, in a peer group, I think it's important also to express our challenges mm-hmm. because like you said, sometimes people may feel like you're alone in that situation or alone in feeling that way. And like you said, it's not seeking validation or opinions. It's getting different perspectives that can help you make a healthier decision or make a a better step forward or what have you. Um, Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. And I had, you know, my husband, uh, he had a really real conversation with me, you know, uh, a couple months ago, I guess in May now, um, around how I had a really unhealthy, um, attachment. Uh, so I'll go the negative, a healthy attachment to my business. And, you know, that, that things needed to majorly change because I was making some tough stuff around business mean something about me as a human. <clears throat> and so then therefore I became not a great human to be around. And, that was tough for him to watch and see it and to experience and to not know how to support me through that. And so he just, he had just had to flat out say like, listen, you got to make some major changes. I don't know what changes, you know, that's on you, but this is not who you are. These aren't thoughts about yourself that you would generally have. So something has got to shift majorly. Mm-hmm. Um, in order for you to get back to who you are, in order for you to feel better about yourself, about your business, all the things. And so it was a hard conversation. I knew what he was saying was true. And so, you know, I made the, the necessary adjustments, but it didn't mean that it was easy. It didn't, it wasn't fun. Um, but, you know, I'm definitely on the path of reorienting myself to not have such a, it's not even dependency. Cause I think, I don't believe that I'm dependent on my business, but what I think happened was just because you're a like, I'm pretty personal brand, even though my business is named system save me, they equate system save me and Jordan, right? Right. Very tightly wound. And so if I've had to make business decisions for the sake of the business, then people would make that about Jordan as the human they would. And that's tough, right? And if I'm having conversations with lawyers or HR people or whatever, and they're saying, you have to make this decision for the business, even though in my heart, in my head, all that stuff, I don't want to make that decision. Like that, that's where it was tough for me to delineate between me as a human and a leader and what the business needed, right? Right. Because I think sometimes we get too closely tied to our business. And that's again, where we start to have dialogue in our head about, okay, I'm making this business decision. And therefore that makes me a bad human. Like, right. no, it's, it's a business decision um, and, and whatnot and what's best for the business. Right. And, and that is a, you know, I don't have that all figured out um, <laughs> and whatnot. Like I said, we just had this conversation with my husband, but it's, it's something I'm, I'm really conscious of and that I think more people need to get that level of awareness with themselves as well and start to unravel that tightly wound correlation that people have because mm-hmm. it's extremely unhealthy. And, mm-hmm. and that's what I've experienced recently. And so I'm unraveling, I'm figuring it out. I'll let you know when I have it <laughs> figured out if I ever do, but uh, you know, giving yourself grace in those moments too, and, and recognizing that it happens to a lot of people as well. And so yeah. it's just part of it. Absolutely. So what do you think are some of the best and worst choices that you've ever made? And why do you think you made them? Oh, wow. Oh, gosh. I mean, what's so fascinating is like when you think about choices and decisions, it's like I'm making choices and decisions every day. So to, it feels like there's <laughs> like a, a Rolodex just like push through of like, okay, let's go back into the index. Uh, but 
I would say probably some of my, I wouldn't say worst decisions, but decisions that I may have done differently uh, were more around mm, how I, I started to probably in like 2020 started to be like, okay, if I'm wanting to go down the scaling path of my business, I need to do exactly as others do. And so I, again, I built success and and had a great um, business model and all that sort of stuff, but that also wasn't quite aligned with who I was. And so I would say probably I wouldn't necessarily change the decision to change the business model, but my change would be in going down that path of of that uh, business model. I wouldn't have necessarily just to a T like cookie cuttered my way through versus actually thinking, okay, I'm adding this element to my business. Is this aligned with how I want to show up? Is this uh, totally the, the way that I would create something like this if I were just leaning on my own understanding? So again, it's, I don't know that I have like a worst, worst decision per se, because, you know, every decision has gotten me here. And at the same time, you know, again, it's like, okay, I would have kind of shifted that a little bit better to fit and align with who I am. Um, And then best decisions um, probably have been around, I would say a few areas. Like I, I really have met the best decisions I've had are like when I invest to be in uh, again, circles that are aligned with the type of people that I'm in. Um, so again, sometimes that requires a big investment of time, or sometimes it's a big investment of money. But I would say those are probably the best decisions because I, when I'm in a room full of people that are not aligned with me, like I will be down for days, weeks. Like it will truly shift how I think, how I move around, all of that sort of stuff, and it will really mess with me. So. It is important if I need to, again, uh, extend myself time-wise or or money-wise to be in rooms that are with people who are truly aligned with how I operate, I will do that because being in rooms that are not like that is not worth it to me anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say that's those are some of the best decisions. It's like, okay, I'm in this room with people who take their businesses seriously. Like my business is my livelihood. Like this is not a drill, okay? Yeah. Um, especially, I mean, now I'm married, but even when I was a single person, it's like, okay, well, if I don't make money, like this is a problem. <laughs> like right. I'm eating soup for weeks, right? So, you know, I I take my business very seriously. I'm committed to it. And so I can't mess around and play around. And so I found that like in early in business, I would go to like brunches or and there's nothing wrong with those things. For me, those if those types of activities are not aligned, because generally speaking, in my experience. They tend to be people who this is a hobby. If they make money, cool. If not, like it's fine. And like, I like that is not how I run my business. I run my business again very seriously. So, yeah, investing to be in the rooms that are of committed people, um, or again, investing time being in the rooms of committed people is probably some of the best decisions I've made. Yeah. I think there were, well, you said so many things there, but there were three things that I wanted to go back and highlight. One, was where you said, um, well, basically every decision that you've ever made has summed up to who you are, where you are in life right now. So for the women that are listening, I want you to think about that. Every single decision, Mm -hmm. good or bad, that we have ever made has got us to this point today. So if you are unhappy with where you are today, then we have to look at our previous choices and actions. If you love where you are today, Again, look at your previous choices and actions and continue with that. But it's evaluating our past decisions. I think, you know, oftentimes there are a lot of people who play victim and say, well, it's this person's fault or that person's fault or this happened or that happened. Yes, life happens. Life happens to everyone. But how did we contribute to that? How did we co-create that experience? What decisions did we make that got us to that point? I wanted to highlight that. Two, Um, Also, when you spoke about going to events that don't align with you and how you're down for days, Mm -hmm. I 1000% can understand and agree with that because when I, so I've been self-employed since 2009 Mm -hmm. and I remember I thought that I had to go everywhere and do everything. 
And I would go to an event and the next day, like the fibromyalgia flare up would be through the roof. I could yep. not move. I could not leave my bed. I'm like my kids are having to make me tea. I'm not able to function. And it took me years to realize that it was due to me being in environments that did not align with me energetically. People don't understand how serious that is and how energy mm -hmm. is transferable. And when you are in a space where the energy and the vibration is totally not in alignment with you, it affects you physically. Yes. So that I wanted to definitely point out. And then oh, you said one other thing I wanted to highlight. Now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I don't know, What's investing so time and money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, I can't remember, but I'm sure it'll come to me yeah. later. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, mm, what do I want to ask you now? I have so many questions. Okay, um, I'm thinking about with your business and the uh, chronic illnesses, I know that that requires you to set some boundaries around you because I know personally you know when I used to have these flare-ups people didn't necessarily understand when I wasn't able to attend certain things or yeah. even with family it's like they took offense they didn't understand yeah. and people constantly are asking for things and wanting things that you don't have the capacity to do yes so I would love if you could speak to how you've been able to set and maintain healthy boundaries yes yes so yeah there's you're going to come across disappointment from people is like the first part, which again is never my intent and never something that I want people to feel when it comes to interacting with me uh, and whatnot. So I've had to do a lot of work around being okay with disappointing people. And, you know, even still it, it like does not feel good to me to even say that, but it's, it's important because you have to realign with where you are at. And so boundaries that I've had in place are, again, if there is, you know, a tricky part about the online space is that there, there tends to be a very negative tone in general. Um, and even if people are really happy online and they're excited to share stuff and whatever, like, that is when people will come because they do not want to see you happy. And I, I'm not bothered by like, again, even if people, I don't agree with their business philosophy or how they run their business or whatever the case is, but they're happy. I don't, I don't make that mean anything about me. I don't make that mean anything about how I, sh how I should act or, or anything like that. It just is. And I think that a lot of, so I kind of have an energetic screen when I'm scrolling, um, to say like, I'm happy that they're happy. Like I don't have a ton of ill will towards people in general. Like that's just, I don't carry that with me. And so I make sure that, uh, again, the rooms that I'm in, et cetera, are not rooms that are like heavily making fun of people or bashing or things like that. Like we can talk and engage and say like, okay, this person did this strategy. Like, does that feel aligned with how you are? Or does that like, how does that sit with you? But I'm not interested in personal attacks. I'm not interested yeah. in coming at people in any way, shape or form. That will never be my nature. Um, probably because, you know, growing up and, and having my dad be a football coach, I was, all the time, you know, criticized and attacked at 12 years old um, by old men in their mom's basements on blogs, right? So um, I had to deal with gross, inappropriate criticism since a very young age. And so I just find that to be kind of the lowest of the low. I, I don't mm -hmm. have space and capacity for that. Um, I'm, I'm open to dialogue. I'm open to, okay, this was interesting. How did it make you feel? Or how do you you know, how would you handle that situation differently? But I think too often people are so quick to, to bring people down that seem happy or that are proud of themselves. Uh, actually, um, I don't know if you follow Maddie Woodard on Instagram, but he just mm -hmm. posted something in about how, again, like I'm not sharing my wins to show off to you. I'm sharing my wins because I'm proud of myself. Yeah. And I was like, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I am here for that because 
you know, too often it's like, well, oh, that's too showy or that's you're, you're trying to use that to gain money or whatever the case is. And like in business, you're dealing with so many hard things on a daily basis. Can I just be excited about this <laughs> for a second? Okay. Yeah. Like, and people, and so again, it's social media is the highlight reel, right? So you have no idea what's going on in people's lives or, or whatever the case is. But I think that one boundary that I have just generally speaking is, is not being in rooms that are, are based or are all of like the message and the stage and the, the purpose of them is to like fight certain people or to be against certain people. Yeah. I have no, like that is a very big boundary for me because I am so uninterested in that. Um, So that's one big boundary that I have for sure. Along with um, another boundary around just like, again, if somebody feels uh, entitled to my time, um, right. um, I I don't like, I don't have space for that. (laughs) I just, I don't. And again, I think that, In the online space, I don't know if you've ever like looked into like parasocial relationships where, you know, as we talked about earlier, like influencers or you have a social media presence, people know a lot more about me than I know about them. And so then when they are talking with me and stuff like that, I would say I generally have really positive, lovely conversations in my DMs. And then there's a few times where, again, if I don't respond in a fast enough way or whatever the case is, then people will come and slice you. And I'm like, you, you do see I'm running like a business <laughs> and I have family and I like sleep, you know? So it's, they don't think that about kind that of stuff. stuff. I'm just they, like, they, <laughs> there's a that. huge percentage of the population. They see everything that you're doing. And right. like you said, they don't consider your time or your capacity or what is happening offline. They are just focused on their need and what it is that they want. And unfortunately, there are way more people like that than, than we realize. Um, I I had an experience this week where I was flabbergasted because there was a a female that I had known when I was a child. I moved away from that area when I was eight years old. I am 43. Okay. (laughs) When I was eight years old, she found me on Instagram, which I haven't been on that long. Mm. And occasionally interacts on Instagram. And last week I got a long essay in my DM that she is surprised that I have not reached out to her to help her on her journey, that I show my success and that she also wants to inspire people. And she is surprised that I have not tried to help her or reach out to her or encourage her in her business. And I thought to myself, what in the entire F? (laughs) (laughs) I thought, uh, is this a joke? Is this a test? uh, I'm sorry, what? Right. And to keep it polite, I just put up (laughs) a reel that said like five ways to deal with people that have unrealistic expectations of you. Yes. Because I don't want to tell her where to go. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know. (laughs) Uh, Totally. Totally. It's, it's, yeah, it's this interesting. uh, Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to, to think of it. And so I have to, there was somebody who, uh, this is, this don't quote me because I did not say this. This is somebody else, but I can't remember who that again, talks about like anyone who's like more successful than you is not going to act like that which is so true. Right. And that doesn't mean that we can't interact with people that aren't as successful as us. Right. That's not what I'm saying. And the behavior showcases what's really going on. Yes. And it's not really about me. Yeah. Her wording let me know that she needs more therapy than, I don't know. Than you can. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But (laughs) on that note, (laughs) can you please tell the listeners where they can stay connected with you, where they can learn more from you and about you? Yes. So Instagram is my jam. I am pretty ridiculous over there. So you can just uh, come follow me, come DM me. It is me and my DMs uh, and whatnot. So I do enjoy chit chattery over there. I do have my own podcast that system saved me. Instagram is at system save me. Uh, and then website in general has a ton of fun shenanigans for you to play around with. So just system save me.com. I keep it easy.
<laughs> Love it. Perfect. I will have all of those um, details and all where they can find you in the details section below the episode. So they don't have to search too far. They can just Perfect. click and connect with you directly. Yes. Well, I'll look forward to chit-chatting with people and hearing what they have to say about the episode. And we can talk chronic illness. We can talk all sorts of stuff. So I'm here for it. (laughs) Yes. I love it. Thank you so much, Jordan, for your time, your energy, your wisdom, your story. Um, I especially want to thank you because I know when you have a chronic illness and your capacity, you know, isn't always there. So I truly, truly appreciate you. And um, I think in in the interest of time, I'll skip the, the rapid fire, but I just want to let you know, like, don't be afraid. I am here. If you need anything, I am oh, happy yeah. to be of value in any way that I possibly can. Oh, thank you, McKinney. I really appreciate that. This is awesome. This is a great interview. So thanks for having me. Thank you. I'll record like the outro and all that stuff later, but I know you yeah. had a hard stop. So you I just to yeah. you off right on time. I know. It was, yeah, it was a great conversation though. You're great at interviewing. So <laughs> it definitely you. is. Uh, it's it comes natural. Well, I don't know if it comes natural for you, but it seems to come very natural from this end. Oh, the podcast taught me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from the app, the repetition for sure. Yeah, I hear you on that one. So, well, this is super awesome. And we'll definitely share when uh, it comes out and whatnot. Would love, love, love to do that. And yeah, I'm just a holler away, whether it's DMs or Voxer or whatever the case is. Just let me know. Yeah, how I Thank can support you. or what you got going on. Thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy all the right. rest of your day. Yes, you too. <laughs> To all you healers out there, until next time, subscribe on all platforms. Don't forget to rate the show and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We would love to hear what part of Jordan's story resonated with you. We just want to thank each and every one of you that continues to listen each week to help the show rank globally in the top 1.5% most popular shows out there. And there's over 3 million podcasts. If you can think of two people that would receive value from this episode, please share it with them. Feel free to screenshot this week's episode and you can tag Jordan at Systems Saved Me. You can tag myself at The Real McKinney Smith. A healthy community is a healing community and a healing community is full of hope because it has seen its own people weather, survive, and thrive. So let's continue to heal her.